Katie, it looks like you got like a mobile clinic in the trunk of your car. Wound care nowadays is everywhere. Katie Mowry and Stephanie Clitt are not your typical nurses. Day after day, they pack up their supplies and set out to these forgotten streets of the infamous Kensington neighborhood in Philadelphia. Already known as a hotbed of the opioid crisis, many people here inject openly. And now the area is being ravaged by an insidious drug called xylazine, or Trank. A cheap and powerful horse tranquilizer approved by the FDA for veterinary use only. But some dealers here and across the country are mixing it into common street drugs like heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl to increase profits, according to the DEA. A powerful drug mixture dubbed the zombie drug is making its way around California. The drug has made its way now to Alabama. Xylazine is creeping into the Twin Cities street drug supply at a rate that's alarming law enforcement. Trank, whether it's smoked, snorted, or injected, can make users appear zombie-like. Some say it's like they're in a trance. They also often develop gruesome wounds on their skin. For Katie and Stephanie, it's like nothing they've ever seen. You popped out of your car to administer treatment. Oh, absolutely. Multiple times, whether it's reversing an overdose. You know, we try and do it all, but you will never feel like it's enough. Disturbing scenes play out here constantly. Just steps away from our interview, a young woman overdoses. Katie springs into action, reviving her with Narcan and rushing her to a neighborhood outpost called Savage Sisters. Inside, she's still slumped over and nearly unresponsive, likely from Trank. Though today, she's one of the lucky ones who survives. Xylazine was originally put into the supply to extend the euphoria and the high feeling for individuals consuming that dope. Nobody asked for this. Nobody knew that this was being adulterated into our supply. A record 1,276 unintentional overdose deaths happened in Philly in 2021. Xylazine was found in more than a third of them. That's up 39% from the year before. Our overdose response has had to change significantly. Like, we can't just pop Narcan on people now. We have to do lots of rescue breathing because of the trank is coming. So that's going to change the way overdose looks across the country when it becomes infiltrated. I worked in radiology and cardiology, and I also was a drug counselor for five years. I was clean for a while before something this vortex. <laughs> this is from the tendon damage. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it'll just, right, it'll just fall back down. Now, this is a good day, because sometimes I only have pincher fingers. They get extensive. They come all over the entire limb, full forearms, full legs, full, legs, full caps, feet. all of the hands, top. So he extensive, extensive wounds, like open and in a dirty environment. It's really challenging. Sarah Laurel heads up Savage Sisters. She once ran on these same streets while she was in the grips of a heroin addiction until she entered recovery six years ago. Then we started noticing wounds. But as wounds worsen with infection, they become necrotic and lead to amputation. Some people who use Trank can become trapped in a cycle of darkness, where painful withdrawals send them running back to the drug for relief. Those in recovery say that detox from Trank is exceptionally grueling. Like Jose Castillo, once homeless and battling addiction, he now works with Savage Sisters. My detox was, I can't even describe it because it was to the point where I didn't think I was going to make it through it. The sickness lasts longer and there's no type of medicine they're giving you that's helping it. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's a whole different ball game. Trank and the horrors it brings is now going beyond the streets of Philadelphia. Trank has been detected in at least 48 states. According to the CDC, overdose deaths involving xylazine were 35 times higher in 2021 than they were in 2018. The White House sounding the alarm, declaring xylazine mixed with illicit fentanyl an emerging threat to the US this past April. While opioids like fentanyl, not Trank, are causing the majority of overdose deaths, Trank makes the drugs it's combined with more deadly, and the numbers point to the greatest increase in xylazine positive overdose deaths in the South.
in rural Greenville, North Carolina. Porch is your so warehouse. The porch is my warehouse. So this was all delivered yesterday. 77-year-old Diane Carden is on a mission that's deeply personal. This is Michael, basically almost from birth um, up until um, when he passed. Mm -hmm. Running Eckham for Change, um, an organization in honor of her son who died of an overdose. It's the only needle exchange in the area for hundreds of miles. My son was addicted to heroin. It was really important to me to know what I could do to help him. He helped me to understand that it's not just enough to say, you know, let me get you some help. Where would you like to go? Would you rather do something else? You have to be able to take care of the whole person. What has being able to start Ekam for Change meant for you? Has it helped you heal? Yeah, I think so. I feel like that I'm contributing something to an underserved population here and at the same time um, honoring my son. You wrapping up a community over there? Yeah, I'm wrapping up this uh, every day, once a day or twice. And all right. Them right here. Diane does much of this work on her own and out of her own pocket, serving nearly 100 people who use drugs weekly. She says they're alarmed at the trank creeping into their supply. They're saying, I don't want that mm -hmm. because they're afraid of what the side effects are. If the participants come in and want us to test their drug, we're able to take it, test it, and then send it to UNC so they can tell us exactly what's in it. Yes, sure. that would be perfect. That'd be good. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, and that box there is, has a few in it. The demand for testing is so great, even neighboring counties send samples here. And they give us this handy dandy tape to wrap around it just to make sure it's good and closed. What we're finding is 20 to 23 percent of what we send in um, does have xylazine in it. We have samples coming from two dozen programs in North Carolina, every corner of the state. Mm -hmm. But we also have uh, samples coming from about 110 programs across the country. Dr. Nabaran Gupta, a leading drug researcher, launched the Street Drug Analysis Lab at UNC Chapel Hill in 2020. It's literally like a old school city. They literally have a Fort Knox <laughs> like, for all the really... controlled substances. The kids that Diane and her team send get processed here. Yeah, why are these places sending you samples? I mean, the drug supply right now is so variable mm -hmm. that there's a genuine need to know what people are actually taking. Samples of street drugs flooding in from 29 states and counting. In this set of packages, we've got samples that come from Michigan and come from Florida. We work directly with harm reduction programs and health departments who can message the results back and provide the individuals with support services. So this one is expected to be xylazine and the sensations that are being described is that it causes a heavy sedation. This is the instrument and it can separate and identify components in a mixture. It's incredibly sensitive and specific. Results are added to the lab's website daily keeping states and community groups up to date with the amount of trank on the street. When it comes to sort of this uptick in, in trank, where do you think it goes from here? We already see it showing up with methamphetamine. We see xylazine spreading from the opioids to stimulants, and we expect that will happen more and more. We do know that people are dying with xylazine in their bodies at the time of autopsy. We don't know what a toxic amount of xylazine is. Dr. Desgupta believes the cutting edge effort can help save lives. All the information we get beforehand is only when it's too late, when people are either arrested or they're dead. And those information systems are too slow for public health. How has Zalzine shifted the landscape so that we are once again behind the curve. I think we were caught flat-footed with xylazine. It's really impacting how people get medical care and how people recover from addiction. The wounds are, because they're so dramatic looking, a lot of drug treatment centers won't let people in with those wounds. So then you have folks caught in this catch-22, right? While the medical community is still researching the impact Trank has on people, experts like Dr. Desgupta agree that it's complicating an already dire overdose crisis that's killing more than 100,000 Americans every year. So I've been studying overdose for 20 years. Then like every couple of years, I was like, wow, this is as bad as it's going to get, right? And then the overdoses went up another six-fold, seven-fold. As a society, 
we've had too many empty seats at Thanksgiving. We've had too many people missing from our lives. We have to admit that 100,000 people a year dying is not okay. We need to be open to new solutions or else we're just not gonna get out of this. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.